from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for coming to this wonderful event that is sponsored by the Embassy of Italy and by the European Division. My name is Georgette Dorn and I'm the head of the European Division of the Library of Congress. It is my great pleasure to welcome here Signora Laura Denise Noce Benigni Olivieri, the wife of the Ambassador of Italy and our very frequent visitor, so I'm very pleased to welcome her to the Library of Congress. And then it is also my pleasure to introduce the Deputy Chief of Mission, whose name is Luca Franchetti Pardo, and he formerly was the Deputy Chief of Mission in the, for the Russian Federation of Eastern Europe, Caucasus, and Central Asia. He was promoted to the rank of Minister Plenipotentiario, okay. <laughs> and uh, before that, he had many posts in Africa, the Middle East, and was also Consul to NATO, the Deputy Chief of Mission. And then Renato Miraco, the Cultural Counselor, will be the moderator, and he's the co-author of this book and a dear friend of the library, a famous curator and editor of many art books. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, Georgette. It, it's really, it's really a honor to be to be here uh, today. Uh, as you know, we are in these days, in this year, actually, uh, celebrating the year of the Italian culture in the United States. And and what more thrilling! than representing an Italian book in one of the temples of the U.S. culture that is the Library of Congress. So it's a really we are, we are, we are honored and, uh, and I'm personally uh, slightly em even emotioned to be, to be here today in this very, very fantastic, uh, fantastic place to introduce a very peculiar, a very peculiar book. But first of all, allow me also to, uh, uh, to congratulate everybody and to, to express our thanks to, to Laura Denise uh, Pisoniero, the, the wife of my, of my boss, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my wife who's also here. Uh, and and uh, Professor uh, Miracco and, and all the other uh, persons that uh, have taken their time to, to come here and to, to listen to the, the introduction of this, uh, as I say, very extraordinary uh, book. Uh, uh, it's a book uh, uh, which uh, then will be uh, introduced by the authors, but uh, allow me also to, to, to acknowledge here uh, the, the, f uh, the, um, the film and, pro and the photography critic, uh, William uh, Gilcher, the poet and radio host uh, Grace, uh, Grace Cavalieri, the curator Vera Curtis, and also Dolores Kendrick for, for making this this event uh, this event uh, possible. Actually, we have we supposed to have here. I don't see them. Uh, Renato D'Agostino and Bianca Sforni. Yes, yes, uh, here they are. <laughs> here they are. <laughs> uh, uh, two of the photographers of the um, uh, of the book, which I had the pleasure to, uh, to already uh, to know them and to talk with to talk them in uh, a few days uh, ago. And really, I can tell you. Not only the book is uh, is uh, is fantastic, but the, their pictures and the matching. And here we go to the to the point: the matching of images and poetry is uh, something that is really, uh, really, really I think new and and uh, and uh, thrilling to to all uh, to all of us. Uh, actually, as you might be aware, uh, we not only are presenting uh, this uh, this book in a very let's say, uh, a sophisticated place, as, as it is the Library of Congress, as I said, one of the temples of the U.S. culture. But uh, the, the, the pictures, uh, the, the photographies, uh, and, and part of the, of the poetries were also presented in the buses. Uh, in the sense that uh, for a certain period of time, uh, the buses of uh, Washington, D.C., had uh, some of the, the pictures and the, and the poetry. And I think that uh, uh, presenting a, a, an original book in an original place gives really the idea of what an original country Italy is and, uh, and how our creativity not, not only goes in objects, but also in the way to present, uh, to present the, uh, the, the object. So uh, uh, really, it's, it's for us, as I say, a great challenge. This year of Italian culture, we have uh, uh, more than 200 events in 50 cities throughout uh, all the United States. So we are not serving all, only our DC friends, but on the contrary, we are trying to, to serve and to present the best of our culture, culture in uh, in a broad sense, uh, because we shall have uh, 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 literature, uh, poetry, uh, photography, but also uh, painting, sculptures, music, 
uh, actually uh, yesterday it was interesting because we had a uh, for example a concert in uh, in the uh, in the embassy in which instead of being a piece for for uh, for piano and soprano uh, because the soprano was supposed to to, to read poetry by uh, uh, I mean, on the contrary it was uh, the, the poetry was changed into music and the duet was a piano and and a, a saxophone the saxophone playing the part of the poetry which i think it's it has uh, also an interesting um, experience which has something to do with what what we are having today so really, uh, thank you very much for, for taking uh, for taking our time. I can uh, I can only say that the, that the book is a very uh, a very sad, uh, ni very good one, very nice one, and very original one. And and please uh, thank you very much. Uh, also, if you will have the time uh, to attend other of the events that will take place within the year of Italian culture, because uh, as I told you. Uh, not only they are very interesting events, but I think that Italy has a lot to say in the U.S. The U.S. has a little, uh, a lot, a lot to say uh, in Italy, and a little of it is here uh, today uh, among us. So thank you very much, and again, thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming. I'm Renato Miracco, and um, thank you, Laura Denise, to be here. Thank you to all of them to be here, really. Thank you, Georgette, to be so enthusiastic when I proposed to you to, to present this book. You say, yes! So it was a really unbelievable. <laughs> thank you, Verna, because this project mm -hmm. came f since a long, 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 long time, and we have some crazy projects. Uh, we are really getting crazy with another big project. Okay, with Crossfinger. And, uh, and thank you uh, to Italian Culture Institute. Uh, thank you to Grace Cavalieri. We really met today, but we were talking for hours and hours and hours for <laughs> since really the beginning. And thank you for enthusiasm. Thank you to introducing uh, uh, William Gilker. Uh, 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 and say we found just a critic. Yeah, wow! <laughs> so it's really a project that came so with so many effort and so many help, and I really have to to say thank you and thank you really to our wonderful uh, photographer, so Renato D'Agostino. Say hello, please, and say <laughs> and Bianca Sforni here. Thank you. <laughs> And thank you. Uh, uh, unfortunately, the the, uh, the publisher of the book is not uh, here because he, he has just a, a incredible surgery on his knee. So uh, Giuseppe Liberani, who donated 101 book to the Library of Congress, uh, is still present here among us. And uh, let me think about uh, uh, how this project came out of my of my mind. Um, I have to confess that I'm really an uh, uh, unusual person? Yes. Um, <laughs> because uh, uh, um, I'm, I'm used just to read a prayer and a poem uh, when I get up in the morning and when I'm going to bed. Because uh, prayer is give, give you, okay, the feeling of to be, belongs to, to, to a word, and the poem give you just the, a new point of view. So each morning and each night, I really would like just to, to read a poem and say a prayer. And this give me just a, a little, a little, I don't know, a new dimension <coughs> probably, yes, a new dimension of, of my life. So uh, uh, I went to uh, uh, Michael McBride. Michael Mc McBride is not here tonight, but okay, uh, he's working with Metro. I say, what we can do for the Italian culture uh, 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 here in the United States? And I say, Renato, uh, can we do something that people can be attached to, uh, give them just a, a new point of view each day? Okay, why don't we do some poem in the Metro? And then, uh, uh, Poem the Metro, Italian poem the Metro. Hmm, it's really sounds really good, but maybe people can read. In, in these days, maybe people can be much more attached just to the vision. So why don't we combine poems and photograph? Was not easy at all 
to convince all the photographer to be uh, attached and close to the poem really was really get, get me crazy but uh, thanks god uh, michael introduced me to <laughs> dolores kendrick and dolores we be together just on the floor of the embassy Shh, don't say you know that but uh, say choosing photo and poems and say the match the mess no give it my nod take it with my nod and so on and so on so it was, was really was really uh, uh, beautiful and creative and uh, uh, magic uh, and so this book came out day by day day by day doing so many so many other things but okay it, it was just uh, was just a, a beautiful beautiful idea and uh, I would like just to invite you to see the exhibition because right now we are all, all, always are an exhibition the film collection with the photograph and poem we, we can see till the uh, April 28 so it's really beautiful 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 so I will say thank you again and uh, now I maybe I, I'll, I'll miss so many so many so many people but um, let me uh, pass the floor to uh, Grace Cavalieri uh, uh, she's one of the founder and producer of the poet and the poem and uh, uh, she holds the uh, Allen Gisborne Award, the Bordighera Award, the Peterson Poetry Award, and so on and so on. It's too much. It's, it's really too much. Sorry. I, I, I can't spend all the time reading all your CV. I'm so sorry. And thank you. <laughs> and thank you to Bill uh, uh, Gilcher. He's an independent filmmaker and scholar and is just studying uh, and Chevalier of the Lord de, de la Palme Académique en, en Paris. Uh, uh, and is an aesthetic of film and photography so I really would like to be waiting for his comments about the photographer. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we will have just a surprise for you because Dolores uh, will read just uh, uh, her poem, two poems. The first poem he dedicated to the Italian culture uh, 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 year of, uh, of, year of uh, culture in the United States and you can see in the book the first poem is, is uh, made by Dolores Kendrick for the 2013 the year of culture in the United States and then we have uh, just uh, another surprise okay I don't want, I want to anticipate nothing thank you for coming really thank you thank you I think if you can all hear me I will introduce Dolores from here and then she can take the podium she is the poet laureate of Washington DC and thankfully it's a lifetime appointment I call her the people's poet because she has brought poetry into the classroom, into the corporate boardroom, into the prisons, into shelters. She has really changed the fabric of poetry in Washington. She has had four books out, but the one I want to mention is the one where I fell in love with Dolores. It's Women of Plums, and it's Voices of Slave Women Narratives, Poems and the Voices of Slave Women. And she created this genre and it has been imitated by other poets since then, but it is her uh, original idea. She has three other books as well. She was invited to the Republic of China to teach Tennessee Williams and James Baldwin and some other poets at the Shanghai School of Languages. She's been intimate with France, the whole country, <laughs> especially <laughs> Aix-en-Provence, where she worked with school children and had some reciprocities between Washington and Aix-en-Provence, and still does. And she has many honorary degrees, including a, a doctorate, honorary doctorate. And she is a very important figure in Washington and in American letters. And you're going to hear her in her own voice now. Here's Dolores Kendra. Thank you very much. And there is Michael. Ah. Michael McBride. You heard him that <laughs> we were wondering about you, Michael. Good to see you. Um, I want to thank uh, Renato and, and Grace. And he, uh, the, working with this was a real experience, believe me. And he's not kidding when he says we were all on the floor looking. <laughs> no, Does no. that match that? No, that doesn't match that. Oh, yes, that matches that. I'm going to give you a few examples of that. 
as we were going along. Uh, it, I had never put together a book on the floor before, and <laughs> I, I and and people were coming in. Some of the people who were working as uh, in in the uh, embassy at that time, as interns, came in and watched us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. and I don't I don't blame them because had I been a winter intern, I would have watched us too. I mean, it was really exciting and creative. I when you have people around you who are bouncing off ideas all the time. That's the way I think uh, in interesting art happens. When uh, I almost said great art, but I'm not sure about that because we do have Michelangelo, don't we? <laughs> but I, 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 I'm thinking that when you get a group together and they bounce off ideas, no matter what the art is, you can't help but come up with something that is exciting and wonderful. And you may not all agree. Uh, that I have found out. But that's irrelevant to what you're trying to do. The object is to get the thing done. And we did that uh, very happily. Uh, for instance, I'm going to, um, I'm going to suggest the uh, poem by Eugenio Montale, if you have a book with you. And you'll see that the art we put together uh, came from Gar Gabriela Basilico, and uh, we, it was different. And now, we we could not put together a photograph and a poem that looked alike. Uh, you know that that was redundant, and we couldn't put together a photograph and a poem that argued with one another. That was impossible for it to work. So uh, we had some instances in which we put together photographs that were perfect matches and some were not. And as you go through the book, you may ask yourself, well, how in the world does that photograph go with this particular poem? But you stay with it long enough, you live with it long enough, and I believe in living with art, uh, not the man. But the, <laughs> but the art itself, I believe in living with that, that you get the best out of anything that is going to come around. Uh, I, I can tell you what my favorite, if I can find it, what my favorite connection was. It was uh, Maria Lucy and Nino Miglione. Uh, we put together the poetry of Lucy and Miglione. And that was one of my favorites, but they're all my favorites because we have outstanding artists here and outstanding uh, photography. So I thank you for the opportunity to work, of working with this Michael and Renata. And, and I am very honored to be amongst all the wonderful Italians. Had I known that when I was 20 years old and roaming through Italy and looking for my fortune, that I would be sitting amongst my fortune right here today. I, you couldn't have told me that thank would you. be happening. I'm going to read uh, two poems for you. One poem mm -hmm. is the poem that opens the entire book. It's called Rome, the Eternal City. Now, uh, well, you'll see as we go along. It has a quote from it from Heidelberg of, to of Tours. Rome, thy grand ruins Still beyond compare, the former greatness mournfully declare. Though time thy stately palaces around had sto has strewn and cast the temples to the ground. And the new, the, and the uh, roar of the hounds is finished. How do centuries of Italy roar? Through Renaissance ruins, slipped into the throats of archives of the heart and soul, or the tongues of lions and sparrows? Th there is a murmur along the Appian Way, whispering to the winds of worship, pulling out of hollow places great dreams anchored in the Lord. The Tiber claims the tears of the Pietà, while Michelangelo sings his plain song to the sun. Not far away, crawls an iron of irony of cats complaining against the heritage that touches the Colosseum, where stone has fallen silent. 
There is enough here to fill the tourist spirit of more than an awkward glance. Soon there will be clouds and rain, and the fountains will laugh and speak their seasons. A noon visit about the hidden street where Raphael walked offers a tea room and a cup of hot chocolate. Then an afternoon gift of the Spanish steps or the Borghese gardens wrapped around the hills of the great pines of the city. The Piazza Navona is wide and small, a reminder that small things make great shadows. How does the art of Roman mysteries roar? Hear the brave voice of the Sistine Chapel as it marks eternity with chastity's enjoyment of eternal youth in the first and final judgment and soft passions of joy. Okay, I have another book. Could you give me, is, did, is there another book down there? I probably put it in. Thank you. Oh, oh here it is. Um, I work, my office, the Office of the Poet Laureate, comes out of the D.C. Commission on the Arts and Humanities, a very a very extraordinary group of people who work to put art in and around the city. We have uh, here with us today Dorothy uh, Mc McSweeney, who was the former director of that. Dorothy is sitting right there. Thank you. Um, I came into the office one day, and uh, the uh, the office asked me if I would write a poem about the situation when the kids were killed in uh, up in New, New, Newbury. And I, I think it's Newton. What's the name of that? Newton. 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 Yeah, okay. Newton. And I was astounded when I was asked to write this poem because I had thought that the poem, that uh, I, I didn't know how I would get it done. And my director said to me, well, uh, Dolores, uh, we need it today, and I said, today? He said, yes. I said, all right, I'll see what I can do. When today do you, will you have it? When today do I give it to you? Uh, he said, uh, soon. I said, what do you mean by soon? <laughs> he said, uh, it's three o'clock now, I need it by four. <laughs> So that, that really is not the way one writes poetry, you know. And, and so I took advantage of, uh, I told him, okay, I'm going to see what I can do. But of course what I wound up doing was writing the poem at 4 o'clock. I had it on his desk, and he uh, was amazed and complimented it me and said, Dolores, everywhere there is genius. I said, you're right. You know, you, you, that's the way artists work and whatnot. Now, I'm looking through these two books, and oddly enough, I cannot find the poem. I will try and get it, uh, I will try and get it to you, or in some way or another, it's a poem about that event. And I will try and see if I can get it to you. It is on my website if anybody wants to go into the website. And it's DoloresKendrick.com, and if you look under Healing, you will get the poem, okay? I'm sorry, I thought I had it, but I don't. Thank you Thank very you. much. Uh, are you ready, Berna, to say a few words? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, darling. <laughs> This is such informal. <laughs> All I can say is nobody can refuse Renato. <laughs> oh, good. Um, this has happened to me before, so I guess I'm getting used yeah. to it. Um, In the same room. <laughs> uh, no, um, I had to follow poets at another library pro program, and I was terribly intimidated by that. So here it goes again. Um, the library was celebrating the Edna St. Vincent Millay's hundred and 
hundredth birthday, I think it was, a few weeks ago. And we took some photographs from the collection of her that were in many places in our collection, and I was to talk about that, but I didn't know I was to speak until I got there. At any rate, um, let me continue. I, I want to say that the introduction I wrote to Renato's book, uh, Pairing Photography and Poetry, was also my introduction to Italian photography today. And I was pleasantly, um, appreciative of uh, Luca Panaro's uh, essay in that book because it, it vindicated what I was beginning to conceive was going on in Italy today. Um, there are a wide variety of styles um, and people are not afraid like our um, photographer in, in the audience here, um, Renato D'Agostino, to go back in time uh, a little bit and to use black and white. Uh, the beauty of black and white is forever. Uh, just because we have digital media, because we have Google, we have Google Earth, we have all these new tools, does not mean that something from the past doesn't contain beauty. Um, so I think that uh, beauty is maybe at the root of what's going on, and uh, that's for, forever uh, and, and wonderful to see. Um, so that the photographers all share in common a moderate, he used that word, um, unless it changed in translation, um, a moderate interest in their specific culture. And Italian culture is everybody's culture. I mean, it, Rome belongs to the Western world, and so um, I don't see how they could help but have it infuse their work. But you can see it in objects, in sculpture, in architecture, in some of the subjects they've chosen. Um, he also said that um, the focus is on um, what, the was, what the world has observed from their culture. And I think that that goes along with what I said previously about that culture. Um, it relates to the past, and that also relates to the, the greatness of the past. Architecture, landscape, um, places other than Italy. We're in a big world today. Everybody travels, everybody gets around, and that those are also focal points. And that you'll see that in the photographs in the book. And lastly, that man is at the core, that man is the protagonist in the, in the way that, and the subject that is approached, that we never kind of get entirely abstract, that we're always rooted in who we are as humans. And um, I, I kind of saw that, I don't know if I put it in those words, but it, it made me feel good that that observation seemed to hold true in what I saw as well. Uh, I need to thank Renato and the photographers who are here and the ones who are not here because uh, some of their work that's now being shown at the Phillips Collection is going to enter the Library of Congress's collection. And um, that's wonderful for us. We wouldn't have another way to um, share and to hold, uh, and when we say that, we mean forever, because we do not deaccession. We they will not leave the um, institution, they will not leave the patrimony, um, and it will be wonderful to have those works with us. They will join other work. Our collection is largely American photography. Um, it's just down the hall here, if you want to come at another point in time and see your favorite photographer, you can come 8.30 to 5, five days a week, just with a reader's card. So that's a special privilege that I think um, is American. Uh, it doesn't much exist in the rest of the world, we're lucky. So take advantage of that if you'd like. But these new works, work done pretty recently, will join other work, American work, in our collections that go back to having been shown in Italy, because there was a revolutionary show in Italy in 1902 in Turin, Torino, and um, it was of the decorative arts. Photography had a prominent place that's pretty early in the history of photography as an art form. And we have other work in our collection by Americans that, that were actually in that show. 
So um, it'll be uh, the present mixing with the past in a, in a different way. I applaud the theme of the book and of today's event uh, where uh, words and, and images go together. They have an affinity that I think uh, Renato and everyone else who participated, Dolores, uh, made wonderful use of. Thank you very much. Dr. Bill Gilter is going to say just a few general words about photography because that is his field <laughs> as a photographer and filmmaker and scholar. Okay, I'm going to do it from here. I hope you can all hear. Is that good? Okay, this is really just for the cyber. Uh, the, uh, I'm very glad to be here and thank you very much for the invitation, Renato. Uh, it's an, and it's a delight to have two of the photographers whose work is represented in the book here as well. It's quite a lovely book that you have in front of you. It's a wonderful thing to, you can hold in your hand. It's lovely paper. It's not too thick. It's a, it's a book that you can really spend some time with and, and, and enjoy. There are 12 photographers. I'm not going to talk about the poets. That's Grace's area. But there are 12 photographers. And you'll see they're arranged in alphabetical order. Um, so that's the, the way that they're organized. There are 11 men and one woman. Um, there are, they range from people <laughs> born in the 1920s to the 1980s. Uh, the, uh, of the photographs, 21 of them come from the period since 2000 and 15 uh, before the year 2000. So it's really modern, um, modern Italian photography, but also looking at the heritage of, uh, of, of, of Italian photography that it's very much still living today, as it becomes obvious as you go through this book. Uh, it's uh, as the wonderful essay that uh, Luca Panaro wrote in the beginning, I urge you all to read uh, at your leisure. You find out uh, some, some things which, again, are borne out by what Verna said and also by, by the photographs themselves. First, uh, uh, Italian photographers, like photographers from elsewhere in the world, are reaching an international public. It is not only for an Italian public, it's for an international public. Their themes are international. Uh, we're moving away from the uh, provincial and towards an international vision. Uh, it's a digital world uh, as well. It's a world which, uh, where photographers are exploring all the new means and all the old means of expressing themselves using cameras and, and printing. What we have here is this is beautiful paper that you have printed this on. It's really a lovely book. The f actual photographs, we can't judge the print quality from the book, even though they're beautifully printed, in my opinion. But when you go over to the Phillips, then you can, you can see uh, the, the larger photographs and, and, and have more time with the texture of the paper and those sorts of things. But I'm really, uh, it's, a, it's a lovely book. And I do recommend it to you as, as a... Uh, they're so different. The variety of the, f of the photographers is so different, as the, the variety of the poetry is as well. So I just wanted to say those things kind of as an opening description of what we have in front of us here. Uh, and uh, it is, it is a, a remarkable piece. And I thank you for the hard work that goes into curating something like this. Um, the, st the time you spent on the floor is, was well spent. <laughs> so. <laughs> the... Um, <laughs> We were hoping to go through the book, and we will pick a few of the samples in the book. But um, I would like to comment, first of all, on Dolores's poem, because um, I, I think of poetry as uh, Carl Jung thinks of a balanced life, the, the thinking part, the feeling part, the intuitive part, and the sensual part. And if we have those things, we have a balanced life. And I think, why not apply those to a work of art? And we can look at a poem and see, does it have that? And Dolores's poem has the sensuality. It has the imagery. It has the thinking part with the philosophical questions that she asks. It has the feeling part because her passion for Rome comes through it. And it has the intuitive part because it doesn't say too much, it says just enough, and it lets the reader supply the rest. So bingo, Dolores, you hit <laughs> all four quadrants. And we're going to um, now look at a couple of the poems, and we're going to begin on page 24, Montali. 
um, it's possible because in poetry every word counts. It's possible to look at three lines and talk about it as a poem. And he was uh, a Nobel Prize winner. He lived, he was born in 1896 and died in 1981. And those are about the same years as my own father's life. So I have always looked at his work and felt I was seeing also something about Italy through my own father's eyes. He is one of the greatest lyric poets in the world. Uh, these are world uh, canon poets, not just Italian poets. And I want to read this for uh, a certain reason. Page 24. Once more to feel with sad surprise how all <coughs> life and its battles is in this walk alongside a wall. I take the wall to be the veil between life and death, but I also want to point out the words with sad surprise. Because if you take those words out and you read once more how all this life and its how all life and its battles is in this walk alongside a wall, the poem comes from a very high and lofty place. But when you see the words with sad surprise, the poet puts himself in the landscape the heart, the humanistic part, is in the poem, and it changes the entire landscape of the poem. And I would like then to give you the floor for two minutes. Sure. We're going to, too. We're trying. Um, the, photo the photographs that, that uh, have been selected to go with Montale's poem are by Gabriele Basilico. Uh, and Gabriele Basilico is from nice. Milano, as are actually, it turns out that the north of Italy seems to be uh, particularly rich in this uh, representation in this book. Eight of uh, eight of them uh, of the poets uh, live in Italy. Four of them abroad, uh, mostly in the north. Anyway, Basilico's work. I just love looking at these it, at these images. You need to spend some time in perhaps in better light to look at them. But look at the colors uh, uh, that he has captured in here in the water. The water, these are three bridges of Rome that we have in front of us. Um, and it's the, the, the water is, especially in this first one, almost viscous. You can, you can feel a kind of oily quality practically to the water. It's not a tourist photo of water and bridges. It's, it, there's, a, there's a sensuous quality to, the, to all of the colors, but the water here really, really uh, particularly was striking to me. Uh, this is not the blue skies of, uh, uh, of uh, po postcards. I like postcards myself, and I like to take such pictures, but uh, this, this is a different kind of look. And it's, 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 it's a, it's, you feel the physicality of lived life here. Uh, and of course, uh, Rome is a place that's very much a living place. Uh, so I wanted to call your attention to that. The, uh, there's a, a wet sensuality that, uh, of, of life as it is lived. It is really a, a feeling of life. Even though there's, there's, uh, these pictures do not have many people in them. We have two people and the second picture on page 26 who are in the distance. And yet, uh, and yet it is a, it is for me anyway, a very much of a, f a, a, f a human physicality which one feels in these lived spaces here. So that's what I, I, I love these. These are very, very beautiful, beautiful pictures indeed. So. Uh, that's all I had to say about that. Are we, are we wrapping up? <laughs> no, we're not wrapping up. We're rushing <laughs> okay. through. Um, we're going to go to page 32, 32. Uh, Pasolini, because uh, I think Pasolini is well known as a filmmaker, of course, a great intellectual, an essayist, very controversial figure. Um, it is said that his father aborted an attempt to m assassinate Mussolini. There's a lot of drama in his life. I always go for the celebrity with the poets because I, they were living people. They weren't dead poets. And he was a member of the Communist Party, and then he was expunged from the po Communist Party. He was um, murdered, actually, for personal reasons, not political reasons. Very controversial, a strong artist, very strong film. But his, also he's noted as a fine poet. And after Renato reads this in Italian, I want to comment upon the poetry, which I will not read in English for the sake of time. Supplica mia madre. 
È difficile dire con parole di figlio ciò a cui nel cuore ben poco assomiglio. Tu sei la sola al mondo che sa del mio cuore, ciò che è sempre stato prima d'ogni altro essere. Per questo devo dirti ciò che è orrendo conoscere e dentro la tua grazia che nasce la mia angoscia. Sei insostituibile. Per questo è dannata la solitudine e la vita che mi hai data. E non voglio essere solo. Ho un'infanzia fame d'amore, ho dell'amore che dei corpi senza anima. Perché l'anima in te sei tu. Ma tu sei mia madre e il tuo amore è la mia schiavitù. Ho passato l'infanzia schiavo di questo senso alto, irrimediabile, di un impegno immenso l'unico modo per sentire la vita, l'unica tinta, l'unica forma. Ora è finita. Sopravviviamo ed è la confusione di una vita rinata fuori dalla ragione. Ti supplico, ti supplico, non voler morire. Sono qui, solo, con te, in un futuro aprile. Posed here. And then the, the, uh, the last photograph in this series from 1978 
is this wonderful uh, series of, of, of the patterns on patterns on patterns, including the pattern of the television set, and with a light, uh, a brilliant light on the, on the side. This comes out of a series where there are lots of lights like this in the photographs. So it's a really, these are delightful pictures, playful but extremely serious, I think, at the same time. Thank you. Page 36, we're going to uh, look at Ungaretti, and uh, he was, he lived in the first half of the 20th century. He was a, an experimental poet, one of the first poets to, to write without punctuation, which I th think is very interesting. Uh, he's called a language poet. Now, this is a very lyrical uh, phrase, I flood myself with the light of the immense, but as you know, it light in a, a poetry, in Italian poetry especially, means the spiritual being, the spiritual life. And we don't forget also that light is very predominant because of the great sunlight we think of connected to Italy at all times. You will see light as a metaphor throughout Italian poetry quite often. And uh, we do have a photographer here accompanying hmm? this. So I'll okay, turn it to you, Bill. Do you want to read it? Yes. Two lines? Two lines. I flood myself with the light of the immense. Those are two small phrases, but they are enormous in meaning. Okay. <coughs> the, the photographer here is Renato D'Augustine. He's in the second row here. I'm very happy that you could be here. <coughs> the, um, uh, uh, Renato D'Augustine's work, he's the youngest of the photographers in the book, by the way, um, but that doesn't mean that he's less of a master of what he's doing. He works a lot with, uh, has worked a lot with urban places, but always kind of at a different angle. Uh, you see a couple of examples, three examples here of, of uh, urban uh, pictures that are in, in fragments. This is not the, the world which is held together, the world of the Siena town square, for instance, or that sort of world. It's the world of the detail, the fragment, the piece of the, of the whole, and seen from an unusual perspective. He brings us his point of view uh, and makes us look at our cities in different ways. A couple of, he did a very large project, I understand from reading about him, uh, uh, with uh, of world cities of, of urban life uh, in many, many places. He also uh, called Metropolis. He also did a, a, uh, a series on Tokyo. Uh, and I want to, he's from Venice originally, and he did a wonderful book. I saw some of the photographs on the web, thank God for the web, um, of, um, of, about Venice. But it's a Venice without gondolas. It's, it's, it's little, you recognize the city when you look through the pictures, but it's not the one I remember from having gone there. He's shown me a different Venice. And that's, that's his gift, and that's his gift to us. And, and uh, so I want to thank him for creating these beautiful images, very formally composed, focusing on, uh, folk with a narrow focus on, on uh, things which we wouldn't pay attention to if without, with a normal eye, with a regular eye. That is one of the vocations of photographers in general. It reminds me a bit of, uh, in a sort of, in, in one way of Antonioni uh, is sort of looking in the f formal empty places uh, or bits and pieces where the world does not hold together. Uh, but there is a, a, at the same time, a, 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 a real beauty which, which grows out of these, of these images. So thank you so much for your work and for, for these and for, I hope, many, many more large exhibitions that we'll be able to see. Um. Let us move to page 60, Sandro Penna. We're going to move around quite a bit on the book. Um, Penna was a controversial poet. This, I will read this. It was my city, the empty one. It was my city, the empty one, at dawn, full with one of my desires, but my love song, my most honest one, to others remained unknown. He was uh, known to write poems to uh, young men. This was not very popular at that time in Italy, and he was not, uh, he felt very alienated. He felt other than. And I think that poem, this poem shows this alienation, and uh, to others remained unknown. But he was, uh, had a, a great lyrical life, and I feel a very unrecognized uh, one. Okay. And along with Sandro Pena, we have photographs by Bianca Sforni, who is also with us today. 
Um, both Bianca and Renato live in New York uh, at, uh, at this uh, point, although you also s spend your time in Los Angeles and Paris, according to what I read. So, um, her these these photographs. I mean, just just look at them. They unbelievable colors mm, mm, in mm. E each of these three examples. The the uh, this one, this first one, which is uh, called um, Fujisan on Fuji Film, so the self uh, re reflexive. Um, is uh, I mean just it's just magnificent the various colors that she has there and she's and she's left also sort of the edges of the f of the negative for us to to look at the the, the framing but my goodness this, there's a sensuality here that for me sort of marries Italian taste and New York sexiness <laughs> you know it's really <laughs> it's really thing. it's really thing. wonderful <laughs> um, but the, the 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 way it's framed and the choice of the subject is uh, and then this these these magnificent colors if you look at the second one. Um, which is called Celeste, uh, that there's the subtlety, I mean, if you compare the two that are on these two pages in 62 and 63, the rich, velvety red of the, of the one on the right, um, compared to this, this, this so mm. subtle mm. colors of the one on the left are just, there's a, there's a palette here mm. which, the, which, uh, painters would be, are, I expect, very envious of. It's a really, really delightful ex uh, uh, exploration of, of color itself and of the, the photographic subject, going from something very close in the, fi in the, in the uh, final of the three to something very far in the, in the first and the second one. So these are just gorgeous. And uh, I look forward to seeing the actual prints at the, at the yeah. Phillips. So, yeah. Let's, Thank let's you pop back to page 28 to go back in time a little bit to Giacomo uh, Lepardi mm -hmm. and uh, he was he lived in the first 1837 is when he died so he w lived in the first part of the 19th century and this is important because he was very much influenced by romanticism at that time, the romantic poets. And romantic poets were pastoral poets. And interestingly, they usually started at a geographic place in a poem, and they would move through their th rumination of thoughts, and they would wind up in another place. And so I think it's interesting that we see that with this, the infinite. Always to me, beloved, was this lonely hillside and the hedgerow creeping over and always hiding the distances, the horizons, furthest reaches. So we see a typical romanticism starting an, in a place at the hillside, thinking almost, it reminds us of Plato's Republic where we can't, we are in the cave of shadows, we can't see, we can't turn around until we reach infinity. So he's speaking of something beyond his geographic location. But it's very much in the tradition of the Romantic poets. Okay. And with uh, Leopardi's poem, we have uh, photographs by Gianni Berengo Gardin. Uh, and these three are, I mean, we read that uh, Berengo Gardin didn't like to change anything with the photograph, that he didn't alter things. That he didn't play with the with the composition mm -hmm. or yes. crop things or change change uh, you know he wasn't into Photoshop let's say, um, but of course I don't believe all of that but I I, I do uh, because it isn't just raw reality which we have here it's a carefully 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 composed images he must have spent enormous amounts of time kind of setting up things when he could. Uh, setting himself where something would happen eventually so that he could take the photograph which he perhaps already had in his mind. The first photograph is also chosen for the book cover uh, and it is of course one of those kinds of poems which asks us to go on a journey along with these two, two people. Um, you know, nel mezzo del cammin di nostra vita, we feel like here. Uh, and what are they going to discover as they go on uh, on that on that journey, winding across? It gets kind of uh, unknown in the mm -hmm. distance. Mm -hmm. And maybe he, if you turn the page, maybe he gets to the beach with these with these two people, uh, um, and their and their child, and the and and the water. Certainly a, a common common theme in. Uh, uh, in Italian uh, art uh, of all kinds. Or perhaps he goes up in the hills and he gets to Oriolo Romano and finds these, the, uh, the family, finds this kind of traditional um, 
um, the, they find these traditional buildings and people simply living their lives, and he captures them in this gorgeous, this very uh, gorgeous uh, photographs. Uh, uh, Berengo Gardin was born in 19. 30, so he's, he's a much older, more uh, um, uh, of a, a different generation from most of the photographers in this book. But it's a, it's a timeless photograph, and uh, he's, I just, you, can, you can spend a lot of time looking at these and, and mm. enjoying the, 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 the texture um, of the spaces and, and of, the, of the weather, everything in these, in these pictures. The way that these people in the family photograph, or the, rather the village photograph on page 31, um, have... I mean, it's hard to believe that he didn't do a little posing of people there. I don't know if he did or he didn't. <laughs> I have no idea. But he, w whether it was simply a, a miraculous moment that he captured or whether he posed them there, I don't know. But I'm glad he did. Whatever happened, we have a, a little miracle here, as in many of these, po of the, many of these poems and many of these photo photographs. We're going to um, conclude with page 68, Montali again who is such a, a great world-class lyric poet. And I want to read this, page 68. Again and again I have seen life's evil. I have known no good except the miracle that reveals the divine indifference. It was the statue in the drowsy trance of noon, the cloud, the cruising falcon. And this is a very good way to summarize what we're talking about because art is the statue. Art is what we make permanent. Art is what lasts. Everything else is motion. Everything else is gone. Everything else is the drowsy trance of noon. And so we are honoring that kind of uh, permanence today and the people who made it. And I believe that you would like to um, have, have the photographer say a word. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's so rare just to have just a the. Okay. There is not an answer. Okay. Uh, it, it's, uh, uh, it's just uh, so rare to have just uh, the, the photographer voice. So I would like just to, to uh, invite Renato and Bianca to say no more than two minutes each. <laughs> 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 Their point of view, please. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it's so rare. <laughs> don't be shy. And, uh, don't be shy. And say <laughs> um, I would like to thank uh, Renato first, okay. <laughs> and then everyone that is hosting us in Washington. And uh, I didn't know about what this would be when I was asked to participate. <laughs> it was like a blind box. I am a photographer. I make images. I work with the 4x5 camera. And I think photography is about stopping time. Mm. Uh, it's a moment mm. like poetry. Mm -hmm. The difference is that with our tools, I mean, I use the ancient tools mm. still. I use film and I use a camera, but we stop time. Mm. What you see, it's a moment. Mm -hmm. it's, it's there or it's not there. You get it or not. And uh, I'm very happy to see this little book because uh, the generosity of the people that have been working on this book and the result is exceptional. And the other thing that I really like in this operation is the fact that this was accessible to people that are not so close to culture, travelers that can be inspired by some high quality works, you know, of Italians. Doesn't matter if we are Italians or American, as I think, you know, it's products of mind, mm -hmm. intellect. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the passer, the traveler, the people that go to work, that is obliged to, you know, to commute every day, has access, if he wants, to this, when usually is bumped by something that he needs to buy. So free access to culture, I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. And I think this operation is very smart and beautiful and generous. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to thank 
everybody involved in the project. Uh, when I received the, uh, the first email about this project from Renato, um, I knew it was going to be something good because uh, that's what he does and the way he does it. Um, two things, uh, I, I share everything that Bianca just said about the relationship between photography and poetry. What I like to say is that when you talk about a photograph, uh, um, many, many times it's about composition, it's about nuances and uh, tonalities, uh, uh, beside obviously the subject. And that's uh, what poetry in a different medium, medium is. Uh, it's, uh, you think about composition, you think about the slight differences between one word, the choice of one word or another one. Uh, you think about the balance between all the values and that's what uh, you do in a print, in, in black and white, in the dark room, or or, uh, or in color, it doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's about that uh, finding that perfect balance that will make the photograph uh, perfect and not just a print. Uh, the other thing, and I share this with Bianca too, uh, she said about the, the traveling and uh, accessibility, and uh, um, I have a little story to share with you. It will take one minute. Um, uh, at the opening of the Philips, um, I had this very kind a uh, man that came to me and he said, uh, thank you. Is that your photograph? And I said, yeah, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, um, I, I said, why are you thanking me? And he said, well, I drive the bus and every morning I see that photograph and I'm so inspired and happy for all my day. So thank you. <laughs> I was like, whoa. I said, thank you. And so that, I think that was the spirit of the project. And, uh, and uh, I, I'm a... Um, so happy and excited to, to, to be able to, to share this with, uh, um, with a word of uh, uh, poetry and photography, which are words that I love, truly. So thank you again. Thank you. I would like solely, only to underline that uh, during this project, Gabriele Basilico passed away, oh. and the last things that he did is just to send his photograph to us. Mm. So um, after a few hours he, he died. So it was really touching for me. Uh, it was really unbelievable. And I have no words to say thank you to Georgette, to Eris, to the Luca Franchetti Pardo, not least <laughs> Laura Denise, to Marta, to, to Alberto, to Michael. Michael is Michael. This is one of inspiring me and we, <laughs> we are creating together this book. And to Domitila, the Domitila is uh, unbelievable. And uh, and to Grace, where was she? She's running, she's running away. And to Bill and um, Dolores, thank you, thank you for your work, thank you for your work, thank you again for your passion. To thank you to Verna, and um, really, really, it's a it's an honor to be here, but it's an honor to share feelings and uh, project with all of you. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.